so we are going to pick up where we left off last week. Um, so basically for the past couple of weeks, we've been going through talking about works of the law. Um, they must have finally closed that gate. Works of the law. Um, but we're going to be doing a contrast between works of the law versus works of faith. So now today we're going to start to get into works of faith because we talked a lot about what works of the law are and with works of the law and just as a quick review what we've been talking about is that with works of the law that is basically doing things to earn righteousness the, the whole intent of me keeping the word of god the whole intent of me performing rituals and doing all these different things is so that i can earn righteousness which that has been done away with. The last scripture that we looked at was Romans 10 and 4. And it said, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Because now, since Christ came and did what he did, we're now moving into this era of Christ has fulfilled all the law and rituals under the Old Testament. And he was the only one to actually earn righteousness. And as being who he is, having all power and all authority, he can now share that righteousness with whoever comes to him the prescribed way. That so was that was Romans 10 and 4. 10 and 4. Yeah. So now what we're going to do is start getting into what does works of the works of faith have to say, because we already looked at what works of the law has to say. So now starting with works of faith, um, so let me just, and so a lot of this is going to be a review because we know, hopefully have a good working definition of how to exercise faith. But faith is exercising actions according to God's prescribed way. Um, hold on. Okay. Sorry. Uh, faith is exercising actions according to God's prescribed way to approach or access his throne of grace. So the first scripture we're going to look at, we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 4 and look at verse 16 in New King James. Hebrews 4 and verse 16. And this says, for, I'm sorry, let us, oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, this says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. And we know grace is God's kindness, his goodwill. So let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So here in this verse, we are being told that we need to come to this throne of grace so that we can obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In time of needing salvation, in time of needing forgiveness, of time of needing healing. Like all these different things, I need to come so that I can obtain it. Which is another scripture that goes to show us that we do not automatically obtain the opportunities God's grace provides until we come to him to secure that. Mm -hmm. So let me just pause there. Does that make sense or any questions there? Okay. Yeah. The sentence. Um, so this scripture proves that we do not automatically obtain the opportunities. We flipped it. Yeah, we flipped it. <laughs> ah, sorry. <laughs> it just made more sense because of the camera. Yeah. Um, so we do not automatically obtain the opportunities God's grace provides until we come to him to secure them. Sorry, because when they came in. No, I, I'm going to say it again. Oh, I know. Okay. Yeah, I already know. I was like writing it. She's not writing, so I know I got to say it again. So let me just read the scripture again and we'll start over. Okay. okay, so this scripture talks about here in Hebrews 4 and 16. It says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. And we know that grace is God's goodwill his um what i say his goodwill his favor his loving kindness so let us come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need 
So what this scripture reveals to us is that we do not automatically obtain the opportunities God's grace provides until we come to him to secure it. So we have to come to God to secure it because it says we have to come boldly to the throne of grace, to the throne of his goodwill, his loving kindness, his favor to obtain the mercy and grace that we need. Well, his grace is what makes all the opportunities available and his mercy makes sure that we don't get what we actually should get. So I have to come obtain that. It doesn't just automatically manifest in my life. And so forgiveness of sin doesn't just automatically manifest in my life. Deliverance doesn't just automatically manifest in my life. Healing does not just automatically manifest. I have to come to that throne and obtain that. And the way that I'm going to do that, which we're going to see, is through faith. So now what we're focused on for those that just came in, we've been talking about works of the law. Now we're going to be comparing that and start looking at works of faith and how that's different. Okay, so faith is how we access God's for um, uh, faith is how we access God's forgiveness of sin. Um, first, we must understand that according to so let's just turn here. Let's go to Romans 10 and 17. Because we're going to see in Romans 10, 17, how faith comes, which we know. Just a review. Um, you can do new King James. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So as we see, faith is coming through hearing the word of God. Therefore, we must hear the word of God in order to know the prescribed way to come to God and access every opportunity that his grace has provided. So our job is to hear the word and follow it. Hear the word and follow it. And for people saying that you don't have to do certain things that God's word clearly says we have to do, it's just like, don't expect to get what his word says. Because I can't now start rewriting and recoding how to come to God and how, and how to obtain or access things in God's word. Does that make sense? Okay. So do you think it's through misinterpretation or maliciously like, I just don't want to do that? You can, hold on, you can move this. Okay, do you say that one more time? So you do you think it. it's mainly through misinterpretation and misunderstanding of the scripture or maliciously like, that's just too much, I don't want to do that, so I'm changing. I, th- I think a huge part of it is through misinterpretation. Because like um, the person that I was telling you about, I had the conversation with, the background they come from, they're not really being taught that you have to be water baptized or anything like that. And again, because people idolize leaders instead of like worshiping God, then they just follow what the leaders say. And they're like, well, according to you know my background, this isn't what's been taught. So initially somebody got off somewhere and I don't know if their initial getting off was malicious and they taught everybody else to get off or if it just was really, they just didn't understand because they just took one scripture and was like, oh, this is what God means. And it's really not. And I think back to Martin Luther, um, I love the movie that was done about him when he got a copy of the Bible in the, in the way that he could read it, or he studied to understand the way it was written, I forgot, because, you know, Catholics, they only put it out, I think, in Latin, and most Mm -hmm. people couldn't read that. But once he was able to transcribe what the Bible actually said, he was like, none of the stuff they're telling us to do is in this Bible. And then he started to realize, okay, no, we got to do this, we got to do this. But he didn't take it far enough to grab all the pieces of what we have to do. He only took some of the pieces, and it probably could have been because he just missed it in his studies, and said, oh, this is what we need to do. And then you had the Lutheran church was born. But they still missing a big portion of what you have to do, which is to be baptized. So, and I know with him, it wasn't malicious. You and I think it, it also kind of was like an overreaction to the Catholic doctrine. Yeah. Because they were so legalistic and task-oriented, he was like, but to your point, when he you know was looking at it and saw grace and saw love and that it wasn't fear and that you couldn't buy your way in, he probably was like, "Yeah, we ain't doing none of that." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. So before I, I'm mean, actually say gather, like the more in depth of gather, I never knew people did not believe in my world, did not do baptism, and I was confused when I first heard this. I was like, "What you mean people don't get baptized?" And it's like that, I, I'm going to call this the new car effect. When you get a new car, 
first, let's say you got you don't have a car and you've never seen that car ever. But then you get a new car, you just start seeing that car everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. yeah. So that's what it was like. Yeah. Now that I'm starting to learn and pay attention more, I'm starting to hear other people say like, yeah, you don't have to get baptized. You don't have to get baptized. And I'm just looking like, so this happened, this has been going around me my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like figuring out the, the serious of people of not being born again. Yeah. And I'm like, this is some... It's a huge problem. Yeah, it is. And I'm like, wow. It's crazy. And I think it's because you get isolated in whatever your worldview is. Like, for example, like I grew up PAW. That's all I knew my entire life. Until when we moved to Chicago and I actually met Trinitarians. And one of them was like, oh, there's still people like you? And so I'm like, what you mean? Y'all are in the minority. Then oh, we the minority. Yeah, and I found out we were the minority. And I was like, oh my gosh. Because <laughs> even, like, I remember playing Christian games with people. And, um, of course, we all came from the background of believing that, you know, Jesus is one person. You got to be baptized, all of this. And we were playing, and I knew better. I knew to come from a Trinitarian perspective because most of the world is Trinitarians. And so I answered it right, and they were like, but that's not right. I'm like, yeah, but most of the world's Trinitarian. Whoever wrote this is Trinitarian. And they're like, huh, I didn't think about that. And I'm like, yeah, you got to know what lens people are coming from because not everybody coming from the same lens. So when did you, from the perspective of, that perspective of playing those games and stuff, when did you like really find out in your walk that there was a plethora of other people and that we were the minority? I think I knew going into it because before I went to church, I didn't start going going for real for real till i was in the 11th grade and we shopped churches and landed at you know lodabar but i i think i already had this awareness that most people thought that he was just like three different people it, it was a blessing that we landed at a church where they did not teach that because i probably would have been like yeah he's three different people but because i was in an environment where it's like no he's one person he's this he's that you know, and I think before we started going, we used to um, listen to my dad used to listen to all the time Frederick Casey Price, and he recently passed away. But he was like a really good teacher, and I would just remember being in my room and listening through the wall at him teaching. So that's where I got a lot of my teaching from before I even started going to physical church. Um, and I believe he also taught from the perspective. I could be wrong, but every time he gave his perspective, he always gave a one perspective, but the different roles. And that's where I got that from because he taught that. And I would just listen to it from my room and talk like, you got one person, but I'm a father, I'm a son. I remember him saying that. And so that was the perspective I had. But then when you get around most of the people that I would talk to, he's three. Like even when I worked at like Macy's and stuff like that, there were people that were Christians that worked with me. Well, you know, believers, but they believe that he was like three different people. That was the only perspective I would hear unless I was around people where I was like at in church. So. And, we, and for like knowing that he has three different roles when you say like the father and the brother and the husband or something like that. When other people say that he's three different people, it's not. It's not a culture shock because you understand how they got to that. Like, yeah. no, it, you're just taking the roles and dividing them into versus I think it's three separate people and you're telling me it's, on, it's only one. That's a bigger mind shift, I think, versus us. Like, I see how you got the three roles are three people. No, let me narrow you down versus, no, it's three of them up there and now you're telling me it's one of them up there. Like, that's a bigger, like, I think, mind shift. So to her point... Like, if you already grew up with the three different roles, it's like, oh, you hear it, and it's like, oh, okay. I see how y'all got there versus the opposite way. Yeah. yeah, for me, it sucks that it took me until, I don't know, I don't know how long I've been hanging around you, but until you came around. <laughs> um, for me yeah. to know that, how to explain it, because I went to a white school and I went to a Jewish school, so... I was able, like, I already knew that PAW wasn't the only way, even though, like, mm -hmm. I grew up at a PAW church. Why wouldn't my mom come in the Jewish school? I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> but they have some, and I would never forget, they have interesting rules at their schools. But um, as far as, like, going to an all-white school and being in Royal Oak and stuff like that, there were a lot of Trinitarians, and they were, a ma majority of them were Catholic, and they would always say, no, it's like Christianity. But I never understood mm -hmm. 
what the difference yeah. was until I got older, until, I, like I said, it came around you. Now I'm like, dang, I wish I would have known how to explain it back then because all it's so many people that think that it's yeah. the same thing. But I just knew that it was. I'm glad that I knew that PAW wasn't the only thing, so that way I can... You know, now I can better explain it. Yeah, like for me, it was it was PAW and Catholics. Like I didn't really understand like Protestants because most people don't even understand the Protestant movement is not Christian. Because like I even studied it in you know all the world religion classes I had to take or whatever, but I never connected because they're so now like intertwined. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I would have met like Lutherans, all the other now denominations that I'm aware and knowledgeable of, like growing up. And the PAW doesn't really do a good job of preparing people either, because they're no. just, yeah, like. Because they don't know how to explain nothing. It's just <laughs> all. <laughs> they put a video and they're going to tell you the history and what you should know, and that's why they're going to tell you they church, their yeah. specific church history. Yeah. I don't need to know who founded <laughs> this. And tell me the real stuff. Yeah. yeah. So Deborah says, I think that most Trinitarians. <laughs> Don't even know what that means. Like three, like they don't, they don't three persons. Most Christians, Trinity and some oneness, don't even know the Bible and understand the distinction. Yep. In many cases, church going is just a happy. Yeah. Because I remember one time we were on a call. I'm not going. I'm not going to say his name, but we was on a call for like, Sunday school. Not. We were on a call for Sunday school, and somehow a Trinitarian came up and he was like, he's like, yeah, yeah, he was dogging Trinitarians or whatever. Talking about, um, like, you know, I don't know even where they get this. You know, you only got to confess with your mouth and believe with your heart. And I'm like, because you don't read your Bible. <laughs> like, not, like, I'm saying, like, they have it wrong in terms of the full understanding. But, like, the fact that you don't even know that is in the Bible. Oh, he, they didn't know no, who, in the Bible. he did not know who is. I was, I'm not going to say who he was. But I was sitting there like, no, I, he legit was, he did not know it was in the Bible. Like legit, right. he's like, I don't even know where to get that done. statement from. I'm done. And I was like, yeah, I'm, say, that's a stretch. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> that's what I'm, I was like, they, they, what? Like, I <laughs> and, that, and that's who's leading the PAW, those mindsets. Yeah. They don't know much. You had something? Uh, yeah, because, so we're talking about the faith, right? Because I want to know the faith with uh, Trinitarians. It's, it's like, do they have the same belief? Like, they believe that faith is actually belief, to accept, to admit, to okay, acknowledge. Right. They, okay. don't, they don't understand that to exercise faith, I have to put corresponding action to the word of God. Okay. They just think, all I have to do is accept, admit, acknowledge. That's why they have the Romans 10, verses 9 through 10. If you believe with your heart, confess with your mouth, that's all you got to do and you're good. And it's like, no, 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 now you got to move past that and put corresponding actions to what you say you believe. They don't get that part. That's the part they're missing. And that's the piece we got to clue them in on. Okay. Good discussion. So as we go deeper into what's different about the law of, of, yeah, the law of faith versus the law of works, um, note that faith has works or actions associated with it. So this is going to be a review. But in the complete Jewish Bible version, we're going to go to James chapter 2. And we're going to look at verses 17 through 19 and then verse 26 in complete Jewish Bible. Really quick before we go forward, because now I'm like, I want to know, I'm kind of intrigued. So when you were not in the brick and mortar church and you were at home, so you more so learned through the dude that just passed away. Mm -hmm. So once you got to um, Lodabar, you had an understanding already of like being born again through the other dude or did not you born that? again i got this i got like a lot of just sound teaching of, on principles from on him. principles okay and then i understood how god was one but he played three different roles from him so you weren't born again yet when listening no to i had not been water baptized in jesus okay. name nor baptized in the holy gotcha. spirit okay mm-hmm. so but then once you went you and your family went to lodabar that's when y'all became born again Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. So this says in James chapter two, verses 17 through 19, and then we'll jump to 26. It says, thus faith by itself unaccompanied by actions is dead, but someone will say that you have faith and I have actions. So show me this faith of yours without the actions And I will show you my faith by my actions. So what this person is saying is that 
it's impossible for you to show me your faith without having actions. That's basically the sum of that statement. When he says, show me this faith of yours without action, it's kind of like, kind of like throwing shade. Show me that act. Show me. Because you can't. I know you yeah. can't. 19 says, you believe that God is one good for you. The demons believe it too. Um, the thought makes them shudder with fear. So, Again, James is saying, that's great that you believe, but we cannot stop there. Good for you that you believe. Now what? You still can't show me your faith because you don't have no works to go with it. You got no actions going with it. So all you are doing right now is believing you are not exercising faith. That is the sum of what James is saying right here. Then it says, if you go to verse 26, he says, indeed, just as the body without the spirit is dead, so too Faith without actions is dead. So we have to put actions with what we believe so that it turns into faith. Because it's not faith if there are no actions and all I'm doing is believing. All I'm doing is accepting, admitting, and acknowledging that God said this or put this in place. That is belief. That is not faith. Faith is exercised by putting corresponding actions to the word of God and because we do that, faith is giving substance to the things we hope for, and it is evidence for what we cannot see. Yeah. So, that's, and that's what, like, is always kind of like the disconnect for me, because culturally, we emphasize actions over words so much, mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, actions speak louder than words. Don't, don't tell me, show me. Like, and just for folks to miss it, it's like, well... I, I don't know. It's just because I just like the I always try to be like outside of just my belief in Jesus and following him. I try to be intellectually consistent in all things. And that inconsistency in people where I'm like, I believe this, but I believe this, I believe this. And it's like it's like a scatterboard. Yeah. And I'm just like, how does that even make sense in your head? Exactly. <laughs> well, I can speak from a personal standpoint for me. Because, like you said, I would say the actions to be louder than, louder than words and all of that. And then here's scripture that clearly says what it says. And then I wasn't operating it. I believe it was more so in a sense of I was just reading them just to be reading more on a like this is the traditional. Let me just make sure, you know, I read my devotions and stuff like that. But not clearly understanding the word of God. And it takes maturity and actually digging in your word. Before, I wasn't doing that, and I didn't have that understanding because I was just like, okay, let me read my scripture for today, and then I'm closing my Bible and I'm done. So a lot of people are misguided and don't understand those principles because they're not reading their word consistently or they're just reading just to be reading out of tradition and close their Bible and then, you know, go about their day instead of really seeking and meditating and understanding what the word of God says. And I think that's a really good point because a lot of people are doing that. They're reading to check off a task on their mm -hmm. chore list. They're not reading to say, okay, how am I supposed to structure my life to live? That is the whole purpose of reading and studying the Bible yeah. so that I can see, so that I can renew my mind because that's what my renewal is. It's changing the way I think so I can change the way that I speak, the way that I feel, the way that I move in life. But if I go from a standpoint of, let me just read this to say I did it so I can be like, Lord, I read your word versus, Lord, I'm reading your word so that I can change the way that I think, so that I can change the way that I speak, so that I can change the way that I behave. Those are two different um, goals into going into reading the Bible. And, and I don't even think I hear that a lot in church, what people saying, this is why we read it, to change this about our thoughts, our speech, and our behavior, not to say... Let's read the Bible in a year just to say we read it in a year. What good does that do if you're not going to take that and, and transform who you are? And during, like, that's why I got behind because I started, like, actually doing study notes. And, like, when you yeah. start doing that, like, I can't read yeah. these. Yeah. And I was one of those people, once again, I'm just being transparent, that wasn't doing that. Yeah. And I was just reading, just, I did my scripture for today. Now that I understand and I actually take the time to read it, it hits different. Because I'm like, okay, I get why you're saying that. Or I can ask, like, Lord, why are you saying this? Instead of being like, check, I read for today, I'm done. Let me or go if about you don't understand it, like, you read your verses, but you didn't understand any of it. Because, like, that doesn't make sense. So, like, to the point, like, I'll just stop. Like, 
I don't understand what they like. Everybody read the same scripture and nobody's talking about it, right. and I, I didn't understand it. So maybe it's me. Yeah. And I'm like, they on the next scripture the next day. I, I'm still on the one from yesterday. I didn't get it. Right. So if I was like that a few years ago, then I'm sure there's people who are still like that and haven't come up at all because they had they still where they are. Deb, go ahead. I saw your your mic moving. Hold on, Dad. We don't hear you. Hold on. Yeah, we hear you now. Wait, hold on. Wait, it's yeah. coming from this. It's coming from the TV and not our speaker. Hold on, we're trying to change it because oh. we can probably hear you. I'm like, I heard it. It's not the TV. I thought she had turned it. <laughs> Sorry, we gotta fix our connection. One moment, yeah. It's just really light. That's what it is. What? I'm not even going to You said you said you're going to be honest, but that's not true. No, you actually need to learn this stuff because when the days that we're not here, yeah. You know what you're going to be looking at. Do you want her to just talk? Yeah, just go ahead. Go ahead. Um, we're going to have to try to tell you through the TV, but we got to fix this. Go ahead. We're turning it up really loud. Okay, go ahead. This turned off. Yeah, I know. It just crashed. <laughs> your, your laptop just crashed? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. we just put you on there. So, I think that a lot of times, the, um, the blindness comes in where you just don't know. Yeah. And literally, until the moment I got baptized, I did not understand being immersed in the name of Jesus. But when I was, when I was baptized in the name of Jesus, I felt the difference. And I and at that point, we was very cognizant. You know, it was a very conscious um, thing that I was then saved. So a lot of times, the church just don't understand because it's generation. You know, it's generations and generations like that. Mm -hmm. You know, like my um, grandfather, was, you know, um, the head of the church of his little small town. Um, it's it's just it's a it's a, it's a grain, and like people don't know better until they they encounter you and then encounter how you live. Right. They know people on your job will notice that you're different. Right. And that's how people get it. It's not necessarily always the discussion. It's looking at your life, how you live. Because that's how I saw it. I didn't necessarily understand what kids were telling me, but I did see they they live different. And they, they really they really did have a character and they were going in the direction that I wanted to go in. So I just wanted to question that because, you know, going to a lot of times you don't even know 
that there's a difference. Yeah. And I remember I taught a small class about history of Christianity and at Grace, who the saints didn't know their own history and the you know the complete history. And seriously, I'm still learning to be thinking about the history of Christianity and what it's all about. It's so fragmented that many people don't know or understand the total history. It's just not anywhere where you can just easily find it. Yeah. And I, that's a really good point. Um, and that is why it is just like so important for us. And the Lord has definitely been laying that on my heart is that people don't know what they don't know, like you said. And when we do enter into conversations with people and they say stuff and we know they're wrong and they're going the wrong way, we can't be like, oh, well, I don't want to have this conversation with them. So I'm just let them be wrong. Like we need to speak up and say something because how are they going to realize that they may not agree with you in that moment, but we got to at least make them aware. Oh, you don't know what you think, you know, and then maybe he got us in another disciple after us to say the exact same thing. And they may, he might have to send a few for they start catching the tone of, okay, I keep getting this. Let me look into this. So, yeah, we just, as disciples, we're going to have to be bold and step up. And when we do hear people say stuff that's just not accurate, to just share what we know and leave it at that. Because that's all we're responsible for is getting the information out there, not for how they respond to the information we put out there. Make sense? Okay. So people that yeah. are not operating, um, when we were talking about that they just believe and they're not putting any works, how are they justifying the scripture we just read because that like it just seemed like i don't know if they even reading it oh, right. to be quite honest i was trying to try to you know yeah fill in the gas but if so they're not even taking that stripper I, I can't say a hundred percent but i've never heard it i've never heard it <laughs> i've never heard someone say that comes from the perspective of all you got to do is just believe i've never heard them talk about this scripture okay. they always go to the romans 10 9 through 10 scripture. Which I have heard that before. Which, which to me signifies they may not even be aware of this because we know certain churches only like to pull from certain books. Yep. So they may not even get to James. Mm -hmm. They may be a Psalms type of church or a Matthew. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just saying. So, you know, some of these books... Told it a lot, especially in the Baptist church. You can have faith, but you know you can have faith about something and still not understand salvation. So you're saying that James is quoted a lot in the Baptist church? Faith about works is there. Uh huh. God helped help himself. That's what's always put behind it. And I'm saying this was quoted a lot to me. Okay. Um, when I was in Baptist church, you know, get up and. You know, and go get it if you don't get it, and God was going to bless you with the increase. I think that that is not all the problem. My problem was I didn't know Acts existed like it did. I mean, Acts is not studied enough or understood, and that's where you know we. You got people. You'd be amazed at people who are not totally saved that quote scripture as good as you can and can live every part of this and not be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'm, oh, I was going to, go ahead. So, so that's important that, I mean, that, that was when my, that was when I was growing up, um, my parents knew the Bible, we were loving parents. You know, my mom, she was very, very Christian, um, you know, gave it. So, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't have any reason to think any different because I had a mom and dad that were always there for me that uh, pushed us and taught us to live the correct way. So, you know, I'm just putting that out there. No, no, that's good because I have a question. So would you say that they were just quoting the scripture but not explaining the scripture? Or were they quoting the scripture and explaining the scripture? They were quoting the scripture, and I knew about faith. Because I think that one thing I did when um, I was in college was that I said, whatever I'm doing right now isn't completely correct. And I remember the prayer before even God even introduced me to holiness. I said, Lord, I, I don't want to go back to the because 
I'm just not feeling it, but I know you're, you're you exist. So please take me to some place where you're teaching the truth. So how did they explain it? Because that's I guess I'm trying to so that I can know from a teaching perspective so I can understand. So they're they're quoting the James scripture. How did they right. break that down and explain it to you all? So faith, let, let's take it separate from salvation. Yeah, faith, yeah. It's just um, believing that if you live the, a good life, the right type of life, and if you do all of the Christian principles, God is going to bless you and, and do this, these things for you. Okay. So and then it's God helps those who help themselves. So if you stay asleep all day, you're not going to get a job. You know, this is the stuff that's teaching the black, taught in the black community all the time because we always had to work twice as hard to get what we got. And my parents always taught us that nobody's going to hand anything on you uh, on a platter to you. All we have is thank God because the system is not for us. So we were taught that. I was taught that growing up. And if had I not been taught that, I wouldn't have stayed with God. I wouldn't have tried to look for God. And then when I looked, I said, well, Lord, just put me someplace where they're speaking the truth. And the next thing I know, all these holiness people started to listen to me. And finally, um, one of my friends that I studied with, am I still sounding terrible? No, we can, because he put, a, he put you on the laptop, so we can hear you real good. Okay. Um, so finally, you know, um, when, when, when I got witness to, it wasn't what she was saying, it's how she acted. He, like, lived... Like, and she, she, she got great grade, she was focused, and she was just a good person. When she said she's going to do something, she did it. And I told her, I said, I am going to church with you, because whatever church you're going to, they must be preaching the right thing. And I didn't even understand the baptism in Jesus' name at that time, but I went to church with her. I barely stayed away for the service, but I knew it was right, just because of how she lived. So I think that Trinitarian churches preach... Many of them preach good principles. Many of them right, do. Right, right. They stop short of acts. Well, here's the thing, because I'm listening yeah. to what you're saying, because what I'm trying to do and everything, I'm trying to pinpoint where the problem is. So what I'm hearing is that from the, your perspective, the Baptist church, they did talk about the James, and they said that basically what you have to do, you can't basically sit on your butt. You have to do something. So here's right. where I'm seeing the difference is they're just saying, get up and do some works, but they're not saying that the works that you're doing is corresponding to what the word of God says. That's the disconnect between the Baptist church right. and what the scripture actually says. So I can get up. Yeah. Of course, if I want a job, I got to put a resume to that, but there may be some other things that the scripture says too. In addition to just going to put that resume in, I got to, um, put corresponding actions to what God said about not operating in fear, not operating in doubt. And the corresponding right. actions as they're saying is basically natural things, but not responding to actually what the word of God says. So when it comes to the scripture saying be baptized in water and spirit, I'm not putting corresponding actions to that because my understanding in faith is not putting corresponding actions to the word of God. It's just putting actions in motion. That's what so I heard. It's more philosophical than it is spiritual. That does make sense. Yes. Yes. So that, okay. okay, so that's good. That makes a lot of sense. So to go back to what you said, Nefertiria or Nina, I think it was you. So apparently some churches are teaching this scripture and they know about it, but we know that faith comes from the word of God. And then the actions I'm putting to my faith is to the word I just heard from God. Not just, I just put motions and action in the earth. And then that's me exercising faith. That is not the definition of faith. And so that's what I was trying to pinpoint, Deb. Were they explaining faith correctly or were they not? And to what I'm hearing, they were not explaining correctly how you exercise faith. Right. It's a philosophical thing. And okay. you know what? Um, like the difference I noticed between growing up Trinitarian and oneness is that when I was baptized in Jesus' name, I seriously knew there was a difference. I knew that I just did the right thing. And then when I received the Holy Spirit, I knew because spiritually, um, it was a it was a matter of uh I don't know, it was almost like God just guides you into doing the right thing and you feel the guidance, you feel the comfort, you feel the te you know, teaching. Mm -hmm. Now 
to say that I've got 100% of what I got should have got in the, all the years that I've been, no. Um, the open discussion like we have now mm -hmm. and how we admit whether we know or don't know. Right. And by how we study to show, like you study to show yourself approved. You don't, you're not ashamed to say you don't know and you're going to go back and study that. Right. That, I think, is, is also missing in the oneness church. Like the intellectual part um, where you can go and study more than show. Yeah. You know, right. study more than a good feeling. Um, the good feelings are nice. The singing is great. Mm -hmm. But I think that African American churches, we, we focus on singing and great oratory speeches. Yeah. And not study. So now that's what, that's the difference that's we know. Okay. So, cool. okay. Thanks. Yeah. So, what? Well, she say the one is church, she's talking about Trinitarian. No, she's talking about apostolics. So I'm going to go back and explain okay. that because I know we talked about that. So let me state this first. So we can add this to the notes. Another thing we need to look for when we're talking to people is they may see faith as you just putting some. So, okay. Sorry. I, I, no, no, no. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. So they may. Because I'm like, I want to get this down. Okay. Because I'm going to have to come back and get it from you, Nefertiri, because I'm not writing this down. This different views on faith. Yeah, this is different views on faith. Because okay. here's another one. We, Wait, so we can add. this again? We, I'm about to put it out. I haven't said uh, it yet. Uh, mm -hmm. So one view that we've already talked about is that people define faith, how you exercise faith, is just believing. That's one way people are seeing it. And now, Deb just gave us another way that people are seeing uh, it. Can you say the solution too? The so solution is to right. say it the right way. Right. Uh, I, I mean, for the notes. I, know, I was just asking because I, I thought you were going to stop and say it so I could. Well, maybe I should say all the wrong ways and then we just stay with the one right, right way because this yeah, is going to be the same thing right. for each one. Does that make sense or no? Because uh, I was just going to say what the real, the way you exercise faith is for corresponding actions to the word of God. But see, when you get to okay. the people that don't believe, people that don't even operate in faith, you have to take them to understand that works. Or yeah, we don't have to break it all down. You know, and then, or like people that say works are, you know, you do a works a lot. That it's still the definition is the answer, but I would have to show them that there's a difference between the works a lot and works faith. Yeah. You see, how, like each has the same answer, but it's different aspects to them. Right. Okay. So let me just before I lose this in my head because I don't have this in my notes. Okay. Let me just get these two that we know for sure people are operating in us a faulty understanding of exercise and faith. One is to just view it as believing God, which is to accept, to admit, and to acknowledge. He said it, he did it. That is not faith or exercise in faith. The other one Deb just pointed out is that people know this scripture that faith without works is dead, but the way that they're explaining you, the way that they're explaining how you exercise faith is to just put actions in motion to whatever it is you're trying to achieve. So if I want a job, go fill out a resume, go on interviews. They're, they're saying that is an example of exercising faith. That was what you was about to say because you put, you said they may. I'm not done yet. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. So I'm just kind of. Oh, so, so you're not so, getting to that point. Yeah. So they may, <laughs> what, what I was going to say is they may see faith or let, let's say they may see exercising faith As just operating in actions to progress toward their goal. Towards goal. Towards their goal. Okay. But what exercise in faith really is. It's putting corresponding actions to the word of God that I'm hearing. Because faith comes from the word. Now the way that I exercise the faith that's coming to me is to put actions to the word I just heard. Not to just be out here 
exercise and actions. And that's what a lot of people do in church. Oh, I'm going to operate in this ministry. I got five ministries going. I got no relationship with God, but I'm ministry, ministry, ministry. So I'm, I'm exercising faith. No, you are not. You just busy. <laughs> So, just want to make sure I have it. So, yes. the di- um, another different view on faith, part two, yeah. which is what we should look for, they may see exercising faith is um, as just operating in actions towards their progress towards... Um, no, a- operating in action. To progress towards their growth. Yes. Okay. But what it really is is corresponding actions to the word... Um, of God that I'm hearing because faith comes from the word of God. Yes. Okay, so what it is sure. is putting corresponding actions to the word. Uh, what, what part it, do I need to say? That? You said what it is, but put it. I don't know. You said something. I just want to make sure you said her. What it is, when you talk about what faith really is, it should okay. say putting corresponding okay. actions. What it is. You have it in there, but I don't know if you have putting as the next word. No, I don't. So what I need to Reread do. that. Reread when you but say what it really is. Okay, it's pudding. Yes, yeah, pudding. Okay. Corresponding, Corresponding actions. actions. Andrew, I know you hit your hand up for a while. Uh, so I just want to make a good example. Okay. Like, so for the example that you're saying, people just do action. It's versus like, oh, I'm going to get a job versus saying God want me to do this job. Is that like, or God want me to get this job? No. Um, let me see if I can think of something off the spot. So, Okay. I don't know why I always go back to this. I need to make up more examples than healing, but it's just easier for me. So let's say for healing, um, someone could say I'm exercising faith because I'm taking these pills and I'm going to, I'm going to rehab. I'm doing everything to get my body back in shape versus the word of God says Mm -hmm. that I'm already healed. So let me just put corresponding actions to the fact that I'm already healed. So I'm going to think like I'm already healed. I'm going to speak that I'm already healed. And when my body don't want to get up and go, I'm going to make it get up and go because I'm already healed. And you're going to respond to this word of God. Not just I'm putting actions naturally to things to see it happen in my life. That's the difference. I'm just taking a natural route and putting actions in this natural route instead of me putting actions to correspond to what God already said. So Those are two different things. Me taking pills and going to rehab is totally different from me just believing that it's already done and operating in thought, word, and speech, which is going to cause the manifestation of that to come. I don't even really need to. Well, I don't need to. I don't need to do the therapy. I don't need to take the pills if I just try, if I just trust the word and put corresponding actions to that. So there's two different routes you can go and get it, but one is is exercising faith, and another one is you just moving in actions to progress toward that goal you want naturally. Those are not the same thing. So going towards, uh, going back to the example you gave of like, you want a job, right? Yeah. The one where it's just like, you just put action out, it's like, I just do a resume, and I'm gonna get a job just because I do a resume, make a nice resume. The putting corresponding actions would be of putting a resume to these jobs, Along with that, I'm reciting in my head, you know, like, you know, God will provide, you know, not fearing, not doubting, knowing that, you know, I will get the job. That, yes. So let's go there because I'm glad you started going there. So because you started giving me a little bit more. So, yeah, naturally, I'm going to have to put the resume in. But also at the same time, I need to be meditating in the word of God that says no good thing with he will hold from those who walk upright. Because there's no scripture that says Tremiko get this job. Yeah. So I got to pull those type of scriptures. So while I'm doing that and meditating in those scriptures to eliminate fear and to eliminate doubt, I'm spending time with God because I'm constantly feasting and meditating on his word. He's going to then more than likely start telling me other things to do. Rhema a word. And I need to put those in motion too, which is going to lead to me having an open door that I can walk through versus me just solely putting in resumes and just praying to God that it just happens. Because I've had that happen too when I do things and I start, you know, I'll, okay, let me get the natural part going. Just like um, Abraham and Sarah, he had to have sex with his wife to actually have the baby. But first he had to be convinced that what God said was actually going to happen. Then he had sex with his wife, however many times, but then he kept meditating in the word of God and kept putting action, speech, and thought to what God said. 
So along the way, as other things were happening, he was getting rhema words from God to just keep going, just keep believing. And he reiterated through different intervals in time. It, it could have been like 20 years later after the promise and then another 20 because I, um, hold on, he got it at seven, so it took 25 years. So I think it was like if you study within maybe like five years and then another couple of years later, he would tell him you're going to have his kid. But it wasn't like every single day you're going to have his kid. It would just be like five years past, you still going to have his kid. So he let him know. So that's just taking that word, meditating in it, and keep moving in that direction. So that is exercising faith. So it's just not a natural application. That's what I was trying to get to. It's not just solely a natural application, but it's the application of me putting corresponding actions to the word of God to determine which, what my natural application is going to be. Sorry. Let me say that. Oh, I got it on tape. I was about to say, somebody write that down. because That's it. So it is, I don't even know what I said. So hearing the word of God, <laughs> hearing the word of God to determine and letting that determine what my natural application is going to be, not just going out doing a bunch of natural applications to get so this that's- this part two of this. Yeah, that's the answer to the part two. Okay. So people are actually, <clears throat> instead of God, God get that. they're putting their faith into like <laughs> uh, the mask. The mask. Okay, yes. Because some Christians actually uh, say, like, yo, this is serious. It's scary out here. Yeah. Wear your mask. <laughs> Knowing they get, so they get in their faith and their body into, into a mask. Into a mask. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. So they're putting their faith and belief in their mask because with they, if they were their mask, they believe later on they won't get it. So let me say this because uh, I want to clean this up for all of us going forward. Faith, and I always say this, so I always try to address it when I hear it. You can't put faith in a mask because faith comes from the word of God. Right. He didn't say anything about a mask. So that's just you putting confidence in the mask. Gotcha. That's not putting faith in the mask. Okay. You can only put faith in the word of God, but you can put confidence in other things. Mm-hmm. And that's not faith. And that's another wrong yeah. understanding of faith is just if I'm confident in this, then that's faith. No, I'm confident when I sit my butt in the seat, the chair's not going to break, but that's not faith. <laughs> that's just me putting confidence that this chair's not going to break. And it's a lot of things. Because you, if you like... God talks about stuff that's happening now. Uh huh. And yet, people talking about like, well, He created medicine and He created, uh, I don't know, whatever stuff He. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Uh-huh. So like I'm saying, he, and then you got you going, you have other people that's arguing saying, well, these are man-made things. Mm-hmm. Uh, like when I was talking about the doctor and healing. Mm-hmm. Because uh, when you said doctors are made for... The people who don't believe or who and don't. won't exercise faith. See, people... It's so hard to explain to people that it's... That, that whole conversation. And I just get a little lost in my words. Like, okay, how do I break this down even more? Because God do not say, like, I will create doctors. Yeah. I will um, make medicine. Like, he literally say, I will heal you. Mm-hmm. And versus to what they see and get off TV or the internet. I'm right. Like, how can I, like, you know, explain that more? I mean, his word works. Mm-hmm. So for those who choose to not exercise faith, then you can go the medicine route. But that is not God's best. That's what I say to people. That is not his best. His best is for you to believe his word and then exercise faith by putting corresponding actions in his word to receive what he already purchased for you. But if that's too much for you to do... Mm-hmm. Then you can <laughs> see. I'm being shady. Yeah, All right, no, whatever. Yes, <laughs> I'm just saying. Going, I have a to add to that, but that would help. yeah, but if that's and I got to get to the one the statement too. So remember that before we close. Okay. Um, we but um, it's twelve. Yeah, it, this, this I will go back quick. I only went through one yeah. slide today. Oh, uh, right? oh we got to twelve thirty. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. Like, All right, who I'm used yeah, to stopping yeah, at noon. Yeah, okay, because yeah, I'm like, dang. Like, hey. All right, got you. Okay, so um, so oh, that's too difficult for you. <laughs> <laughs> you can go to the doctor. Yeah, you can just take the medicine. Yeah. So that's the way I would, you know, explain that if if you. If this route is too scary for you, because I will say this, it does seem risky to do what God is saying and do you like, so you just want me to just, just walk off this ledge and trust that your work going to come to pass. He like, yup. 
And some, for some people, that is too much for them to do because they're like, that's too risky. The medicine thing. But here's the thing. When you take medicine, you don't get the effect sometimes right away. You got to take that Robitussin for a whole week for that stuff to start. So, But you, but you, you put confidence in that Robitussin, though, and you ain't seen nothing right away. Why can't you give God that same uh, time frame? You know what I'm saying? Did you... There's no questions in the chat. Did oh, there's questions in the chat? Okay. Uh, ooh, I don't know what I just did. Okay, so I'm going to get enough material than Deborah. <laughs> I hope you're learning this because he's not going to be here on Monday. She just zoomed in. I know how to do this. You silly. Uh, no, that's a great point, and it's just confirmation. Only because I want to say this to the point of doctors and medicine, there's a book that I'm reading called Supernatural Birth. Um, shout out to my doula, let me have that. Um, you might want to say it loud if you're going to shout her out. She's she not even on there, but I was just saying oh. shout out. Like, oh, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> 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 what is the name right now? I'm recording. Yes. Yeah. Oh, shout out to my doula, Rodeja. Okay, so anyways, um, there was a point, it is good that you have friends that's in the Lord. Thank you for being in the Lord, because it was just confirmation. Um, because it goes back to the question that you were asking about doctors and stuff like that, and it's just like with childbirth too. So God has more, and that's what I had to see. So yeah, we're not saying like, oh, if that's where you at, okay, cool. So when it comes to supernatural birth versus natural birth, because a lot of people say they want to have a natural birth. I'm speaking, I'm having a supernatural birth. Natural birth is all dandy and good. Like, it's not a bad thing. The word of God is not saying, like, oh, you can't do this or you can't do that. Like, you can experience some of the benefits of a natural birth, which is, will be good. Like, you take, you know, whatever medicine you want to, or you don't take medicine at all. There is some pain there. But the supernatural is you're experiencing supernatural, you're in the spirit realm of God, like you're experiencing everything that his word has promised, which is no pain, none of this, no suffering. So it's like, there's the natural and then there's more, which is the supernatural. And I'm glad that you said that because I was just like meditating on that. Yeah, quietly. that's good. Okay, so where do we start with Deb here? Um, I, I think there. Okay. So Deb said, so what happens when you get multiple offers? How do you know what job to take? So good, very good question. That is where that spending time in that meditating in his word, because as you meditate in his word, you're spending time with him, that he's going to start to talk to you and tell you. So it may be that he, he say to you, all of them are good. You choose which one you want. Or he may be like, eh, take this one. So um, that is going to come in that personal one-on-one -on -one time with God that he's going to speak to us through a rhema. Because we got to remember, he speaks rhema just as much as the logos in the Bible. And sometimes we're so dependent on the logos that we ignore the rhema. So we got to get really good at hearing him rhema. Um, then the next one is, how do we use God's guidance once we move forward in belief? How do we know how... Oh, okay. Great. And then the Hebrews 5 and 12 says here, um, for, when, uh, for when for the time you ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principle of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. So you want to kind of talk that okay. one out? Because, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, when I ran through it, I was looking for... What did you just uh -huh. do? Yeah, hold on, I hold on, Deb. Oh, yeah, wait, yeah. it's on mute. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, talk, Deb. Uh, did I, did you tell me I said? Okay, we got you. So, so yeah, say it over because the phone cut out. Mm -hmm. I, I think cut out. I'm not sure if that scripture was the perfect scripture because what I was looking for was um, I know when I'm witnessing sometimes, people don't understand, you know, like you, you can give them like advanced principles. Um, and I think healing. Is like, um, even though it's simple faith, people like to change. It's almost like you change your whole culture when you go holiness. Because, like, everything you did believe, you kind of like have to throw that away and you have to start over again. And so maybe they don't understand initially. Like you said, um, someone will still like take a medication and just believe in complete healing. Uh -huh. And they need to do that until they get the faith. So maybe they start off on milk. And then they move to like stronger, you know, uh, this 
they get stronger in the word as they go forward, as they move forward. Yep. So sometimes it's just in patience. You have to like just be patient with until a person gets that understanding. Yep. And that's what I'm trying to look for. So I don't know if that's the right scripture to set there or not. Because I, when I put it, when I looked at for it, and I just popped it in, I said, well, that's not exactly what I was trying to say. So anyway, that, that's all I wanted to say. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. Enough so to... I'm having a hard time understanding if you can just explain to me. So just this is just an example to make it clear so I don't mess up. Mm -hmm. So an example would be someone keeps having like a person, a couple keeps having a miscarriage. So they go and they do um, what is it called? I the yeah. vitriol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they go and do that, but they're saying, like, I'm trusting God, I'm trusting God, but you're doing this, and you're literally implanting the egg, and, like, the sperm inside of you and all of that stuff. So naturally, it's going to happen, but you're speaking that. And then you have people that are Christians that are saying, God did it, but not really because you did it that way. Yeah. So I'm just trying to, and it goes back to medicine, because if you keep taking the medicine, like, naturally, your body will like subject to it and get better but they're saying that they're getting healing or whatever from god and he did it i'm just having a hard time understanding how that can be faith and patience in a sense whereas the natural like that's bound to happen if you do yeah. certain things i'm just gonna call a spade a spade that's not faith okay. because if i'm going to a doctor to implant something in me that i should be doing that uh, okay, so let's take Abraham and Sarah. God said, I'm going to have a child. Let's say if he would have went to the doctor mm -hmm. and would have got in vitro fertilization. Is that, is that really trusting God? No. no, it is not. So we, we call things faith and it's not. Oh, you know, I, be, I put faith in the fact that I was going to, you know, get some money. And then the next day my government check showed up. It was showing up anyway. That is not... All these things we call faith is really not faith. That is not faith. That is you putting trust in man, and then you like, well, God, I'm going to go to man for this part, and God, I want you to step in in the midst of this, me not trusting you, and cause it to happen. So that's where I was stuck at. Okay. Because yeah. I understand what faith is, obviously. It was just more so I just need to talk it out and verbally see because there are a lot of Christians who are not having kids that are like on social media and getting these things like done or whatever. And they're saying they're trusting God in the process and stuff. But my mindset is you can't be because if no. you naturally put the sperm inside, like you're going to end up having kids. And sometimes it works and sometimes it don't. Right. But they're saying, OK, it was in God's time. And if it didn't work the first three times, but I'm like. No, that's not how it goes. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure I was correct with that. Yeah, no. Okay. So because, kind of like to on that question, um, so like if somebody goes to get a surgery for something that they can be healed from in God's word, that's not God. The surgeon did it. Yeah, that's not God. That's, now you can, saying, like, you can give him credit to make sure, you know, you I, I made it through it. I'm not dead. But the surgeon did it. God didn't do it. You know what? I just wanted a clear cut. Like, yeah. Okay, so how, what, is, what does that conversation sound like? It sounds like you a lie. It wasn't faith. The, the surgeon did it. It goes back to what I was saying. Because remember, I was supposed to... I, like, I was just saying, like, no. I was just saying, like, they like, the Lord, you know, cured me. No, no it no. really goes back he to didn't. where your faith is. Like, you go, the faith is the word. He, really, he didn't. And we would just stop... Like agreeing with these folks, Very like yeah, he did. No, he didn't. Let me show you what faith. Let's let's go. Let's go to examples in the Bible. Where do we see all of this man-made assistance? Because I'm not seeing it. I'm just seeing them putting complete trust in God and saying, if this don't work by me putting my full trust in Him, it ain't gonna happen. And this goes back to the conversation that we had back in December. How I was supposed to have that surgery done. And I was going to be the idiot to do it. I had it scheduled for a specific date in December. And the Lord was like, do you trust me? And we are pregnant now. God forbid, had I gotten that, that could have been Satan trying to take my child or whatever. Yep. She would have woke but, up with no ovaries. <laughs> exactly. <Huh? laughs> Who that has happened to people. That's no, I was getting something done. Because once you get, once they put you, what you agree to is, 
any life saving measure. Mm-hmm. So they can go in with the intention of, yeah. which they do, like when doctors ain't out here maliciously, like Take the most of them. You know, I'm not gonna speak for everybody. It's a, it's a black market. Yeah, I don't want to speak in absolutes. So. The majority of them don't go in like, all right, we're about to put them on, we're gonna take everything they got and then wake up and be like, something happened. But they, they do have you sign a document. Point, though, because he uses people yeah. to do yeah. Yeah. Things, But he could know. use them, like I said, he could use them for something to go Without wrong. Yeah. And then the, like I said, they make you sign a document is, we will do any life-saving measure to save your life on the operating table. So you do have people who go in for, cert- for something minor. Mm-hmm. Satan attacks, something goes wrong, and they wake up like, where are my feet? Well, we had to cut them off because of... Yeah, legit, it legit happens. And there are some things that they say because of the way insurance and things work. I'm not even playing. Some of these doctors are going in and purposely doing things to be able to have That's to come true. back yep. and correct it That's to get more insurance money. Yep. So you don't know. They can snip them ovaries and be like, oh, well, now we got to do another thing because we had to snip the ovaries. So now we get more money out of you. This is a money game. So, so to your point on telling people that, just tell like, they should be listening if they are truly in the Word of God and they, exactly, listen to the Holy Spirit. If they don't have the Holy Spirit, you need to get the Holy Spirit to be seeking the Lord. Simple because, like I said, you, where is your faith? Like, it can't be in the doctor. And my faith was clearly... Like your confidence. Doctor, my confidence was clearly like, okay, well, I'm going to get this surgery done, and then I'll be able to have yeah, kids. And, I, and, and Yeah, but no, that's not. So then my question is, for like all of these world-renowned surgeons and scientists that have gotten all of these, like, let's take Benjamin Carson. Mm-hmm. And he says, <laughs> not Benjamin Carson. Um, clearly, he don't like um, <laughs> Not Carson. Um, Just anybody. Just Carver. Anybody. No, because I'm specific. Okay. The guy with the peanut butter. Because he oh, said he George asked Washington. George oh, he's Washington. Not a Carver, surgeon. But he's a scientist. Oh, okay. George Washington. Okay. He asked the Lord, you know, I want to know the secrets of the universe. And he gave him, and he says that the Lord told him, I can't give you all of that, but yeah. I give you for this peanut. And he made all these miraculous medicines and foundations and all of this stuff. And he says the Lord gave him that. But it's medical. So how does that, like, to me, that don't compete. Well, I know from my studies, it was from the peanut. The quote that I have is that he gave him all these different ways that the peanut could be used, not medicine. Gotcha. So he may have gone on after his start because after he did the peanuts, then he took another plant or thing and came up with more stuff. So once he got started, he just kept going and going and going. So the quote that I have from him is not regarding medicine. Is it it the is the regarding peanut? the peanut because okay. that's how he got started. So I can't speak to all that other stuff, but I can speak to God gave him revelation on how to use the peanut. And I think the other one was the sweet potato or something like that, he gave him revelations on how you can use that because this is something God put here for us to use and we can use it in more ways than one. And God probably looking like, dude, y'all can use this in like 500 different ways. So he like, okay, Carver, he going to get in here and talk to me? Let me show him. And then now he can take that to the world because this was the purpose of why I put the peanut down here. You can, move, you can use it like for 500 different things and y'all just using it for one. So. so then all of these surgeons who were saying, like, the Lord, you know, revealed to them or showed them how to do this surgery, et cetera, and stuff like yeah, that. that Are they lying on it? No, or? I'm just saying for I know you specifically asked for that, but no, I'm not saying that they're lying about that either. But again, remember... People are not going to all the time put their trust and faith in him. So they need doctors. Gotcha. So they can because like, they're gonna die. They can have so God can definitely give them with the ability to do surgeries and stuff like that for people who don't believe. That's yeah, that's who understand. that's who should be going to the like, doctor. Okay. That's people who don't saying. believe. That's what I'm because not say. everybody is going to be a Christian. So then they're gonna die early. Yeah. And go straight to hell. Okay, so let's just so prolong their life a little bit longer. Yeah, there are. Yeah. I don't know, like, the belief system, though. Okay. Well, let's just say Christian doctors. So did Luke okay. remain a physician after he... I, I would have to study oh, that out. Yeah. No, I don't know, though. But, I mean, he wasn't walking around with Jesus talking about some, I got this Jesus, I got some pills for you. Like, nah, he was like, let me back up. Like, whoa, this is interesting. Because even as a scientist, what God does, science follows God. So if I'm a scientist, I'm like, Jesus, I'm learning more about science by being with Jesus than I am than just being out in the environment. Because it follows him, everything follows him. So So science is not an enemy. 
it comes from God. So there can't be any Christian doctors then? No, no, he just asked that. Oh. No, I'm not saying that there can't be. Really? Okay, I'm confused. I think there shouldn't be, but there, there they be. can't. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not talking on the subject. He just asked, were there? And no, I, but I'm saying according to scripture, there shouldn't be. Christian well, doctors. there you got to have gynecologists to give birth to the, the kid. I'm just going to give birth to my own kid at home. Like, you do need doctors for things. No. I mean, Sarah didn't have a gun. No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> based, I don't agree with that. based on the scripture in the book that I just read, that would be actually not wholehearted. Well, she had, no, she had a she had handmaids. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, it's just a midwife. No, she didn't just do it by herself. Like, she wasn't like, come on, April. Because <laughs> it wasn't a doctor. There's a difference between the OBUIN and the midwife. Like, I have a. Well, I don't know the difference. Doctor. I just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I'm just saying for you to be correct, it okay, would be yeah. a midwife, which is what Sarah had. Okay. But like yeah. in the case of a Christian doctor, so to speak, it's not exactly that. It, I'm not gonna say whether it's wrong or right, but like you're not always serving Christian people. So right. You trying That's to. That's what I'm trying if to you, understand. If you have the ability to heal and you've been doing that, like if you do that with people, cool. But like not everybody is gonna do that with yeah. you. So then you have your doctor abilities for the people that don't believe. So that's what I was trying to understand from that standpoint. Is it just like they can't be Christian or they can't be Christian? That's why I was more so asking. I mean, and like I say, that would be a good study to see what did Luke do? Did he just abandon the whole practice and just start doing the, the Christian thing or what? But Because yeah. I just think... Because if I can heal... What I'm not That's what I'm saying. I think it would be no hard for a so if Tremico became a medical doctor, right. so like, let's use somebody we know operating this thing. Yeah. It would be difficult because she would be living in two worlds. So one minute I'm telling patient A, yeah. okay, we need to give you this. You got this. You got this. Mm -hmm. But then I'm out in the streets. Like I feel like that would be extremely <laughs> difficult. Yeah. Doctor Jekyll and Mr Hyde. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, like I'm gonna lay hands, but give you medicine at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like you would literally be yeah. contradicting yeah. yourself it is. every yeah. day. Yeah. You take these pills, or you receive this healing. Which one? Like, you know? Yeah, I just think that would be extremely yeah. hard mentally to be it because you yeah. it has to be your thoughts, your words, and your behaviors mm -hmm. having that lined up and then having to contradict it case by case. Yeah. That's why I asked. Or to have like a curious. plan B in certain cases. Yeah. Like that does kind of. Yeah, that's going to start affecting that you personally. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That's a good question. That's a good question. I don't no, have the answer. I don't know. Yeah. 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 And if we don't have yeah. an answer, no. Yeah. It ain't. Well, that was about study. I didn't know. I'm down. Can you explain First Tim 5 and 23? Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thine oh, the other infirmities. The water was contaminated and to drink too much of it. Um, no, seriously. No, oh, okay. Oh. I'm laughing at how she is. No, I'm just... <laughs> Okay, I can do nothing That's right. Thank you, because Trey was with me on that. Kind what? Of thing. Yeah, it was like, yeah, because the water was in the contaminated. It was. <laughs> so, I'm glad I was the only one that. I, I think y'all are bored and y'all should know. Y'all watch me not. for certain things. We were very, so, are very attentive. No. He saw it too. So, so they did Trey wrong. They did travel from different places and ministry. So they did travel from different places and ministry. Um, in ministry Deb, because we know they did. Um, what do you call it? Missionary trips and stuff like that. So, in certain places, the water was contaminated. It, it wasn't, like, the cleanest, and it would cause, like, I don't know if you want to call it, just some health issues in that sense. So, in, in that situation, he said to drink no longer water, but use a little wine for the stomach's sake. Um, and, and it says, and thine often infirmities. So, whatever weaknesses or things that were coming up diarrhea. because of that diarrhea, things like that. Okay, stop drinking the water. Like, we know if you go to Mexico, Don't it is water. known. Do not drink that water. So, he was just saying in that sense, um, I think wine has certain properties and things like that can try to combat some of those things. So, that's what it was. But interestingly, he didn't say take no pills. If you, get, if you get a little yeah. sickness from this water, go see the pharmacist in that city. He didn't say that. So we are to avoid things that harm you. This is not due to sickness. She tried to explain that scripture with that. I don't know. Would you? I'm saying, you know, I was, I've always looked at that scripture and I thought about, you know, sickness and stuff like that. So this is just to say avoid things that harm you. Yeah. But this is not like, like you don't try to 
do things that'll make you sick. You know, things that are wrong, like don't drink water in Mexico. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Don't be like, yeah. the Lord gonna keep me. I'm about to drink. drink. Okay. And I actually had. <laughs> All right. I had a recent situation where I, I was like suffering from a headache and I kept praying against it, praying against it, praying against it. And literally the Holy Spirit was like, it is not an attack. You are dehydrated. <laughs> because I legit was like, this is spiritual. Like, <laughs> And the Holy Spirit had to like tell me like, yo, drink some water. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> like when I was hungry, like I have to go all day without eating, and then I get home and be like, ooh, I rebuked this. <laughs> He's like, you haven't eaten. Yeah, that's like, like, I mean, yeah. yeah. like there are natural consequences <laughs> to not. We, and, and I think we missed yeah, that something because we're trying to stay consistent, <laughs> yeah. and then we're like, oh, I am still in an earthly body that I needs earthly care. things. That's why things. <laughs> If there was Christian doctors, it would be reasons for that. Like, that, like, oh, you're, new, you're malnourished or something like that. You get what I'm saying? Something mm-hmm. like... To tell you how the body works and yeah, stuff like that. that's what I was thinking. Like, if there's a Christian doctor, mm-hmm. like, explain your body. Because sometimes you don't yeah. your body. Things that's that you do need to know yeah, so that yeah, yeah. you don't. Yeah. Okay, so in the last few minutes, I'm just going to... Because I know we've talked about this in the past, but not... It hasn't been a topic or nothing like that. But there is a difference between believing that God is one person... And what the world calls oneness. So that's why personally I steer away from the oneness title. Because n- number one, I'm just a Christian. None of this stuff is in the Bible. But the the understanding is that with oneness, and I have heard this from a number of people. Well, not a number. Some people who are staunchly apostolic. They don't understand the importance of the three roles of God, being Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They just want to only focus on the name of Jesus and viewing him from the perspective of the Son. They know there's a thing as the Father in that role, and they know there's a thing as the Holy Spirit, but I'm just solely focused on this one role. So the rap of oneness tends to, and it depends on what circle you're in. If you're in Pentecostal, that or let's say apostolic, that is not what they mean by that. But if you look at it from other perspectives, because when other people who are not apostolic talk to apostolics, that is all they tend to talk about. So that rap of oneness is you're only focused on this one role. And no, and I remember getting into, I taught a lesson one time at YAS. And uh, one person, they grew up apostolic. I was explaining when you pray, you have to pray to the Father, but in the name of Jesus. This is what God said. We cannot change this, people. And the person argued me down and was like, no, I can just go straight in the name of Jesus. I don't got to go to the Father in the name of Jesus. That's confusing. And to them, it sounded like Trinitarian. And they're like, well, I'm not doing that. I'm just straight going to Jesus. And I'm just like... You, when you go to God, though, you got to go viewing him in the role as being your father, using that one name, Jesus. Not I'm just going to this arbitrary person that's called God or I'm going to the son and going in the name of Jesus. Like you got to recognize and distinguish the roles. And a number of times people that say they're oneness refuse to represent and give equal weight to the three different roles. And that is a problem. You have to give equal weight to all three of those roles because God put himself in those roles to relate to humanity for a reason. We have to respect it. We have to recognize it. And we have to come recognizing those various roles. So that's why I steer away from saying oneness because that could give someone a perspective. I'm only focused on that one role and I'm not. I respect all three roles, but I'm not saying he's three different people. So that's what, because that, that question came up in the rule. What does that mean? And for those who don't know, the world will refer to it as modalism. Like, that's what they call that belief system. What that we are. That we are, modalism. Because we, we feel this, not that we call it. I'm saying, that's if you ever hear somebody else say, yeah, they're going to they're say, oh, you practice modalism, which is we believe in Jesus is in three different molds. Well, we, we recognize his roles but that he is one, and he interacts with us through three primary roles. They call it modalism. I have a question. Is it more so for our mindsets why we acknowledge the three, like when we pray to him as the father, is it more so, uh, it got to be for our mindsets, but what are we supposed to be, I don't know, it's not clicking for me. So a father is a provider. If I'm in a household, Trey is the son, 
Um, he's the Holy Spirit, husband, Holy Spirit. Um, and let's say he's the father. I'm not going to go to the son and be like, yo, I need some food. He ain't got no money. He ain't got nothing. <laughs> It's the father that's the provider. So when I need things, I'm going to my father to provide it. And he made the provision when he came as the son and purchased it. So when I'm dealing with the son, I'm dealing with redemption. I'm dealing with that's the way my salvation came. I'm going to this is the way that I got access to the blood. That's why I recognize the role of the son. When I recognize him as the role of the Holy Spirit, that's that power coming in to transform, to change, to do all these different things. But when I view him in my mindset and come to him as a father, it is the provision. He's a creator. He's all the, that's the role that I need to view when I'm, so what is it that I need? Okay, I'm going to recognize his role as the son for the salvation, for the, all that. I'm going to recognize for the creation for the provision and all. I'm going to recognize him because the father does that. That's the yeah, that's the relationship part. And, and the power part, he comes through as his Holy Spirit. So I got to understand what those three roles signify or what they represent and what they do. So I'll know, you know, but, but particularly that scripture, which is in John, talks about when you pray, pray to the father in the name of Jesus. So and that's what he's trying to get us to see. And I appreciate that we actually spoke about that and dived into it. And I believe we did talk about it in class, and we end up talking about it on our gather talks, too, to have a better understanding of the roles, because the church does not do a good job at explaining the roles and who we should be praying to. Now that I understand, I get, like, okay, the role of the father, the role of the son, the whole role of It makes more sense, and it all ties together, especially when I'm reading, so I know who is, this is the father, this is the son, like that type of thing. Exactly. And, I mean, Jesus even said, they asked him, teach us to pray. Did yeah. it twice. Exactly. <laughs> yep. He said, oh, Father, hallowed be thy name. He keeps saying, you're, you're praying to the role of the Father. Okay. So, I think... So, oh, go ahead. Yep, go ahead. Um, are we going to... Can we have another discussion about this? Because I, I want to explain things wrong. Um, like, when I pray, I'll just say, like, Jesus. I wouldn't say Father. Sometimes I'll say kind of Father. Um, can we have a talk or a further in-depth discussion on the significance of the different roles and how I should refer to God based on his role? Because I've just been doing it from the Jesus perspective. Like, I understand that the Holy Spirit is God's power. Mm-hmm. Um, and I understand that you know, Jesus is like the Father, but I'm. I want to have more clarity in making sure I'm addressing Jesus properly when I'm speaking to Him and getting more clarity on how I should look at Him in these three different roles because I'm just thinking they're all the same and that it doesn't matter. You know, Jesus is Jesus. Um, so I just would like more clarity on that to make sure I'm, I'm addressing God properly. I mean, I can. I don't even know if I can even write an in-depth lesson because it's just as really simple as what I just said. When he says to pray, and we can go there. Let's go. Oh, is it this? Um, Scroll down. Yeah, it's touch, that's touching. John 16. Okay, let me put that or in. Or 24. It's like a, I think that's what it's, he's like, whatever you ask the Father in my name, we'll give it to you. Yeah. John 16, 24. So, uh, I'm going to come in New King James. Hold on. Okay. Oh, Tremiko, get it together. I'm not Darby. good. What is it, Darby? Um, I think so. That is a translation. <laughs> New King James. I feel like it would break my face. It was like one more. Oh. Okay, so this says, and in that day you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, 
he will give you. And we know the son is wearing the name of the father because he's one person. Um, 24 says, until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Go to, then go to Luke 11 so he can see the actual. Okay, so Luke 11. 1 through 13. I want to say 1 through 13. Luke 11. Well, I'll just... We'll just go there, Luke 11. And just... Okay. Yeah, I don't think you need to be so this says, Now it came to pass, as he, being Christ, was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. So he, being Christ, said to them, When you pray, say, Okay, so we're not thinking thoughts when we're praying. We're speaking verbal words. When you pray, say, our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then you go on to that whole prayer. So Christ is teaching as the son, don't, don't be praying to the son. And don't pray to God in the role of the son because that, that's not my job as the provider of you and the creator. My job as son is to provide that salvation, that righteousness that you couldn't get on your own. Now, as the father and my role as father, I am the provider. I am the creator. I am the life giver. You come to me for those things. You, you think of the father in that sense. It's the way you view. What, what do you imagine about God when you hear father? What do you imagine about God when you hear son? What do you imagine about God when you hear Holy Spirit? If it's nothing, that's a problem. If, if it's a blend of just... Jesus. Yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> when I think of Father, I should be thinking creator. I should be thinking provider. I should be thinking these things. Like I said, when I think of son, I need to be thinking salvation, redemption, blood, justification. When I think of Holy Spirit, that's when I think of power. That's when I think of you know, his works going on through the power of his spirit in the earth. So there should, we should be correlating the roads to characteristics of things about him. And if that's currently not in place in your mind, that's where you need to get. And because the scriptures blatantly are telling me when I pray, I need to be going to my father, but using the name of Jesus, which is the father's name. That's how I unlock it. So every day when I wake up in the morning, I'm like, oh, thank you, Father, for having a good night's nice rest, for safety. I'm not talking about some, oh, thank you, son, Jesus Christ, baby Jesus, baby Jesus, black Jesus. I ain't doing none of that. I'm talking to my father right now. So, I mean, that's the short and skinny of it, really, um, Elijah. Um, so in regards to, so I can see... When I pray, saying, Father, thank you for this, thank you for providing for me. Um, do what I have, when I say prayers in God's will as a son, like, you know, Jesus, how are things going? Like, Jesus, what should I be doing? Because Jesus talks about being a friend to us. So You're right. when I pray, I just say, Jesus, yeah. Not the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So when I say, Holy Spirit, thank you for this power, I'm just trying to figure out what name I should be calling out? No, well, the name is Jesus. You mean what role? Because there's only one name, so you hopefully not confused on the name. So the name is Jesus. But when I am going to my Father, because like this says in this prayer, let me keep reading. It says, um, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done. Christ, when he came as a son, he said, it ain't my will, it's the Father's will, because I'm here representing the Father. So all of this stuff is flowing from the head. Well, I won't even say that, the head. It's flowing from the role of the father. Let me just put it that way. So strike what I said here because he's just one person. So he says, on earth as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. You're asking for provision. It says, and forgive us our sins. You're asking for your sins to be forgiven. At this point, Christ had not fulfilled that role yet. Um, for we also forgive everyone who is indebted um, to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Again, talking to the Father, you're asking for these things, for these provisions to be made available in your life. Oh, they cut that short. Yeah. Okay, so that's that. So really, like, if you're seeking provisions or you need something and you want something, I would just say in that particular sense that I always, in my head, because the scriptures have taught me that, I am going to my Father. But, I mean, sometimes I'm just like, you know what? What's up, God? How your day going? 
I mean, or sometimes it's like Jesus help. Me. Yeah, like a brother going through. Yeah, <laughs> if there's an accident about to happen, I just yell Jesus. I ain't got time to be yeah. Father or that. Because the power is in the name, but he's just saying that's why we got to use the name in prayer because that's where the power is in the name. But we need to get trained to to recognize his importance as our father and to have that father son relationship. That is important. And it's also to fully recognize his identity. Yeah. Like it's just like with any of us as an individual. I am not only one aspect in which I interact with. I have layers to my identity. And who I am. I'm not multiple people, but I interact differently with different folks. And for us to just focus on one aspect or blindly, because most people aren't, when they say Jesus, they're not saying, I'm encompassing them. They're just Jesus. You are not identifying the full identity, the full perspective, the full persona of who Jesus is. In the spirit, he was our creator. He manifested himself in flesh as the son to come and redeem us and gave us access to all of this power through the Holy Spirit. It's all encompassing to who he is yeah. as a single person. Yeah. And I think it's really oh. just the delivery. Oh, go ahead, Eli. Oh, uh, how should I interact with the Holy Spirit when I pray? That's what I was going to say. Um, I would say, like, for me, I, we, I think we should pray. We just to respect the time being. Yeah, because we're at 12 30. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, we're going to pray out, and whoever wants to stay on can stay on as we um, answer that question, Eli. So, Lord, we thank you for this day and this time in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you for this class. We just thank you for wisdom and knowledge. We pray that you continue to open up our understanding, that you will continue to give us more wisdom, more knowledge, and more spiritual understanding into your word, your truth, Lord God, so that we can operate um, correctly in our lives and also teach others to do the same. We pray for those that are leaving um, and going out on the road today, that you would clear our pathways from all hurt, harm, evil, death, accidents, injury, and destruction, and give us safe passage and have a blessed day on this day. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so go ahead, Eli. You said, say what now? Um, so, how should I interact with the Holy Spirit? Okay, so, I was saying that that was what I was gonna about to say, because it's more so your, like Tremiko said, it's you recognizing who, his identity. So even though you pray in the name of Jesus or like deliverance, we, we do deliverance in the name of Jesus, but I understand that it is his power that is in operation. Yes. I understand that it is his spirit. The Holy Spirit is in, is in movement right now. That's how that's being done. But yeah. the name that's called is still Jesus or like healing. I have a clear understanding that it's his Holy Spirit that is providing that, that is moving around, but his name is still Jesus. Like baptism. Baptism, we understand that it is through his blood as the son that we have salvation, but when we baptize, we baptize in the name of Jesus. So, So, yeah. That's kind of just what I was saying. Yeah, so the way that you're relating to the Holy Spirit is you're using the power God makes available through his Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you, so he's like, now use that power. That's how you're relating. Okay. Um, because I know it talks about how the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth and all that. So um, for me, like That's when great. I ask, like, I don't like, yeah, Holy Spirit, but it's like your Holy Spirit bring to remember you know, the word of God, you know, help me to think about it and all those things. Like teach me in the thing. Like, you know, that's how I relate to the Holy Spirit in that sense. That's good. That's really good. Yes. And I still say the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because yeah. I still like, yeah. But yeah. So I I don't think Eli, it's not that you need to like call out yeah. Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I don't feel like, you know. Holy Spirit, and I'm just trying to make sure I'm right words and referring to the right thing. The only time we're giving a specifics on who we need to recognize, for sure, let me just put it that way, is in prayer. You just can't be praying whoever you want to be praying to. Mm-hmm. It is clear in Scripture, pray to the Father. So... I would say, let's not make this a whole deep thing. Okay, when do I recognize this role? When do I recognize this role? The, most of the time when you needing something, you going, you going to prayer. So are you acknowledging or are you directing this prayer to him at, in the role of the Father? That's what I would say you no. need to make sure you're doing. No, because I've, I've only been thinking about it from the role of Jesus because we use his name. And I'm like, okay, Jesus, I need your help. What's going on? Um... 
rarely in prayer do I say Heavenly Father, because I wasn't thinking about how I should be praying, because all I knew was that Jesus is his name, so I could just call him Jesus. Good thing he asked. Yeah. So I would just say, make sure that when you're in prayer, you are giving reverence and respect to his role as father. Because we can't diminish the fact that, oh, I don't have to recognize your role as being a father. That gives him great, um, what is it, um, glory to see his children coming to him as this is my father. And I love the fact that I have a heavenly father that I can go to and bring my requests to. Like, don't don't steal that from him. So I'm trying to think of it like a natural father. Like, yeah. when I go to my daddy and I want something, I say, Daddy, you know, like, I, that relationship, when you call him father, yeah. is, it, it naturally brings it out of you to be like, you have everything that I need. I can come to you when I need something. Like, it puts you in that mind frame when you call him father or when you look at him like that. It kind of alters your mindset to be like whatever I'm about to ask you I know you got like yeah. I need to talk to you I need this or you know thank you for you know coming through on this time like you instantly get into that relationship when you do call him father yeah. and you tend to look at a parent as having whether it's true or not in the earth as having more research more resources than you or unlimited resources mm-hmm. and so when I'm going to him and just thinking about this is my father who can provide everything he has unlimited resources I'm going to my provider my father so yeah just like I say off the top of my head that is just the one thing I know that it talks about recognizing his role as father as is in prayer so don't spin off into other things oh i gotta recognize this role and this role yeah you need to understand the importance and the meaning of why he represented or why he manifested himself in these various roles because that's a part of your relationship i don't want someone to only understand one piece of me and be like i can throw these other pieces of her away well no you can't because this makes up who i am and if you can't get with that then we can't be friends and i think like one of the things we is is relation. Like, because I think about my relationship with my father. And yeah, I look at him as provider, protector. But I do also look at him as friend, confidant. And while I don't go to him and be like, Greg, because I'm coming to you as a, as a friend, like I still honor and respect him. But he knows to be like, okay, Donovan doesn't need a father right now. Like, he just needs somebody that's just going to be like, yeah, I hear you. I understand what you're going yeah. through. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So does that help any, Eli? I don't know. It, you, you can be honest and be like, nope. <laughs> no, it, it is because I definitely want it. Rarely would I say Heavenly Father or acknowledge um, Jesus like as the Father in my prayer. Yeah. Um, and just in general. So this is all new for me. This is all new info. So I'm happy to talk oh, about that. okay. Awesome. I forget different people came to Yas at different times. So some, some stuff you got, some stuff you didn't. Okay. Well, we are going to wrap up for today. Um, I literally only got through one and a half slides. So. <laughs> <laughs>